Jesus. Okay, do you guys know what these are? Yeah, you've seen Minions before? Have you seen the movie before? Did you know that there's a big awards ceremony for movies tonight? It's called the Academy Awards. And do you know who's in the, in the Academy Awards who's going to win? It's not going to be the Minions. The Minions aren't even nominated, even though I think they should be. They have one of the greatest redemption stories ever. Because you see, if you've seen the Minions movie, you know that something goes radically wrong with the Minions. And instead of cute little yellow guys, they become monsters, right? Okay? And yet, even though everything went horribly wrong with the Minions, one of them got it just right. And the rest of them were able to be saved because of just one of them getting it right. Well, that's quite a redemption story, don't you think? Well, just a few years ago, I mean, about the time that a couple of you were being born, I got to be a minion. I dressed up just like a minion. I painted my face. I was the biggest minion ever. And I have pictures to prove it. It was for this downtown uh, street thing on, on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And somebody took pictures of us. And they gave me this picture, or this uh, picture with a minion on it. See the minion? That's not me. I'm, I'm better looking than Bob. Uh, but this is what it says. If someone really wanted you, they'd actually put some effort in trying to get your attention and make sacrifices for you. They wouldn't just tell you they wanted you. They'd show you in every little way possible that they want you. Guess what? God wants you. God wants to love you and you and you and you and you and you and me and everybody out there. God wants you. And he's willing to make an effort to get your attention. He does. But sometimes we don't know that he already has us. And so he tries to get our attention, basically through people like me and your parents and your Sunday school teachers, but he also made sacrifices for us. What do you think that sacrifice was? That's right, his son Jesus. His son Jesus came and sacrificed himself so that we might know that God really loves us. And so God does. He loves us. And he sent his son to get our attention. And he sacrificed just to let us know that he loves you. And so even though these guys are some of my favorite characters in the whole world, if you've ever been in my office, you know that these sit on my desk. And Bob and who? Billy Bob. Billy, Bob, and Joe. You sure? I can't remember all their names either because you see there's millions of minions. But sure, you can see Bob. Bob's the one with one eye? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. There. <laughs> see him? Cute little guys. They just remind me. They remind me that somebody wants my attention and is willing to sacrifice for me. And it's not a minion. 
It's Jesus. Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to be with us, to show us a way to get from who we are to who you want us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's go have a seat. Can I see him? The prophet Jeremiah was proclaiming a word of hope after proclaiming a word of destruction to the people of Israel. The people of Israel are now in exile and the prophet Jeremiah is trying to provide hope in the midst of exile. And these are the words that he proclaimed to them. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 11th through the 14th verses. For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I have sent you into exile. And then one more scripture. Coming from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, his second letter, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 17th and continuing through the 20th verses. So if anyone is in Christ... There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors of Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of God, be reconciled to God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word for God's holy people. Let's briefly recount where we have been. Over the past three weeks, we've been talking about things that are important. And I'm starting from the beginning. We started with creation, that God is the creator of all things, heaven and earth and all things. All things that are in it, including the last things that he created, us, human beings. And when he was done with all that creation, including us, he said, it's very good. We also found out last week that God created us free. And that in order to create us really free, he had to give us choice. And the choice was to stay in relationship with God or to move away from God. And so, the conclusion of that was is that the things that we say and the things that we do and the things that we think that separate us from God, that separate us from others, and that separate us from our own true created selves has created a gulf between us and God. And that the very first step 
to bridging the gap that has been created because of sin between us and God is to turn away from the things that draw us and separate us from God and others and ourselves and turn back toward God. And what do we see when we turn around and face God? The gulf is still there. The separation is still there because we cannot save ourselves. We cannot bridge the gap all by ourselves. The good news of Jesus Christ is simply this. God would not leave us alone. God will not leave us in a state of separation. And so, the one who was at creation itself, the one who was there, who actually was the breath that God blew into the lives of us. The breath that brought life into that inanimate statue of clay. God sent back to us. And the word became flesh and lived among us. To illustrate this even more graphically, how many of you have ever had the breath knocked out of you? That does not feel good, does it? In fact, your first immediate reaction when you either get hit in the stomach or you fall backwards and land on your back and your diaphragm begins to spasm and you cannot catch your breath, your first thought is, I'm dying. I can't breathe. Sin knocks the breath out of us spiritually. Sin separates us from the source of life. Sin separates us from the source of life. Now when Adam and Eve turned their backs on God and were ejected from the uh, garden after having tasted the fruit of the knowledge, of the tree of knowledge, did they die like that? Nope. But they started the process of dying because they had been separated from the source of life. God's intent for God's people is for God to live in eternal relationship with God's creation. That's his intent. I know the plans that I have for you, plans for your good and not harm, Jeremiah says. The history of the scriptures is where God has said, I will not leave them alone. I will not, I refuse to let the state of separation be the permanent state. And from the third chapter of Genesis all the way to the end of the book, not Genesis, the end of the Bible, is the history of God's redemptive work to not leave us alone. And God sent Jesus the life who became the light that enlightens all people. He sent Jesus to be here for us. And so Jesus and the cross became the bridge over the gap. 
And all those who believe in him are given the possibility, the right to be called the children of God. We have separated ourselves from the source of life. And the source of life was sent to us because God refused to leave us in a state of separation so that he could be the bridge between us and God. And we are restored. Our life is restored. Our possibilities are restored. Our true created selves are restored. The possibility for relationship eternally is restored. This is why Paul calls it a new creation. Behold, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, everything has become new. All of this is because of the reconciliation that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are restored. Wow. This is important stuff. Now, most of the time in, in systematic theology, they go from, they, they do the, the first talk is over um, the Trinity. There's God, the Father, the Creator. There is Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We talk about that Trinitarian relationship, but I wanted to go even more systematic. Creation, people are good, people screw it up, people need a Savior. That's where we're at. We need a Savior. And that Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, takes every person where they are, regardless of who you are or what you've done or what you think you've done or no matter how deep or wide the separation is between us and God and each other and what God has created us to be, no matter how deep, wide, broad, and any other dimension you can think of, that no matter how far the separation is, God is willing to bridge the gap. God is willing to put the effort into you if you will turn from what separates you from God and take a step through Christ into a new creation. Because that's what's being offered, folks. No matter how old and wrinkled the image is that turns and faces you first thing in the morning, you are offered a new creation. It is God who does it. And really, I need to stop there. Because you see, there's this whole thing about the sacrifice on the cross that we're going to get to in Lent and why that's important. But for today, I just wanted you to know that Jesus was sent not as some theological concept, not as some word that we cannot understand without the interpretive powers of a theologian. Jesus was sent 
for you to be the bridge between life and death, between breath and death, between the gulf that we have created between us and God and the ability to be called the children of God. Amen.